Today we are going to be looking at the third Blue Beetle in DC history, Jaime Reyes. Because yes, technically, there was two before him. There's Dan Garrett, who took on the role of Blue Beetle during World War II. Then there's, of course, Ted Kord, and now Mr. Reyes, who probably is the most unique Blue Beetle there is, especially when it comes to power and utilization of the Scarab. Mainly from the comment section, a lot of people do think that Jaime is one of those characters who is really cool in almost every aspect and has quite a lot of potential to its character. However, it's not being utilized to its full potential, and there is more that this character could be given. Now, with that being said, let's get into the comments and see what some of you had to say. Starting off with Zekril here, he says, my hot take is very personal to me. This subject probably doesn't matter to too many, but it matters to me, so here it is. The voice for the scarab that Jaime hears when talking to it should sound like his, or at least similar to his own. In almost every media that actually has the scarab speak in English, the actor for Jaime was used as the voice of the scarab. Batman Brave and the Bold, along with Young Justice, are the obvious examples. So when I heard the voice for it in the trailer for the Blue Beetle movie, I was let down hard, especially since the voice sounds a little too AI. Yes, it still had somewhat of a personality, and like I mentioned before, it's not that big of a deal, but to me the Scarab is made a little more interesting when it speaks with Jaime's voice. It almost makes them feel like they're family to an extent. Understandable, I think the AI voice is a little bland and overplayed nowadays. If this was a couple of years ago, you probably would have heard me say something like, no, that's actually really cool and I like the AI voice feature. But because I think we've had so many different interpretations of that bland AI voice inside of your protagonist's head and other forms of media, it's not all that exciting anymore. The Scarab flat out using his voice or in a way mimicking his voice is actually really interesting because it it does make it feel alien. You are not alien to yourself, but what is alien is hearing something else, a form of technology, talking in your voice. You are literally its host, and the scarab is an outer extension of yourself. Everything you do or say or how you act is having a lasting impression on the scarab, so that would make a lot of sense. Comic fan. Seeing as the Reach and the Green Lantern Corps are almost at odds with one another, I think we should see Green Lantern and Jaime interact more often. Whether they are antagonistic to one another, or if the Green Lantern in question actually turns his back on the rest of the Corps to defend an innocent kid. Also, I think it would be an interesting Elseworld story, where Jaime becomes a Green Lantern, and Hal, John, or Guy becomes the Blue Beetle. It would be fascinating to see how the personalities would adjust to their new rules. Considering the Green Lantern Corps and the Reach had an all-out war 40,000 years ago and then they decided to draw up a pact and then the Reach went against that accord and then all hell broke loose once again, they are really not in good standings with one another at all. I think it would make sense knowing that one of the scarabs that has been left on Earth for how many years is finally being reawakened by a kid and Jaime Reyes, something that wasn't capable of being activated from the person before him, Ted Kord, and now all of a sudden it's finally found its new host. Is it being used for good or bad? Having certain lanterns be the protectors of 2814, they need to keep their eyes out for potential threats, and 100% the Guardians of the Universe and the Green Lantern Corps, once they've noticed the activation of a Scarab, they would definitely be on that thing's ass like right away. Blue Beetle is not a threat to them is one thing. Also, developing a relationship with the Lantern Corps is very important because I have always believed that Blue Beetle, as much as Earth is very important to him, the galactic regions should also be something of his interest due to the Scarab side of things. And I know we always have the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold best friend relationship. However, maybe they should try something with Green Lantern. And by the way, 
your Elseworlds story idea is something I would definitely read. Totally Aaron. My hot take is that while I'm not a huge fan of Blue Beetle, after having seen the movie, I think he could be DC Spider-Man if they would just put in the effort into making the general public more familiar with him. As a character, he has some amazing yet untapped potential. Blue Beetle is definitely, more than likely, the most closely related character to Spider-Man for the DC universe. He is intelligent and powerful enough to be a character at that level who can elevate himself to taking on higher and heftier threats alongside some of the greatest heroes in the DC universe. However, he's also a very grounded, leveled character where he can find himself helping the little guy, being the savior to a small neighborhood. He can do and be the best of both worlds just the way Spider-Man has done it. With the general public being more familiar with the character, however, I do think that is a lot easier said than done. Over the years, I've started to realize getting certain characters into their limelight and getting the general public to be comfortable and to accept something at the level of Spider-Man can't just come, it needs to be earned over time, and even in saying that, it does not always work. I'm not saying it can't happen, but 100% his movie did not help him in any way. There are general audience members who do believe that movie was actually a Marvel movie. Considering that Kevin Feige claimed he was being congratulated on the success of the Blue Beetle movie, in which that movie was nowhere near a success, by the way. And whereas I 100% agree he's the closest thing DC has to Spider-Man, in which I 100% agree this character deserves to have his name known a lot more in the comic book world and in the general audience world. I think one of the biggest things it comes down to with the general audience is, why do I need a DC's version? version of Spider-Man when I just have Spider-Man. I'm good with that character because that character has everything I need and everything I'm interested in. Why do I need a Marvel's version of Batman when I literally just have DC Batman? I have the Batman right there. Blue Beetle needs to find a way to utilize what makes Spider-Man so special to children, adults, teenagers, everybody, but also deliver a flavor to people that Spider-Man can't deliver. And it's not easy to do stuff like that, hopefully one day. But speaking of the Blue Beetle movie, Mr. Don't Overthink It, I honestly didn't mind the movie. I saw it twice and both times I thought it was a fun experience that wasn't perfect, sure, but was also fun enough to warrant seeing again. So you're not the only one who left a comment on this post saying they enjoyed the movie. I think there's two or three others here that agree with your sentiment. I mean, I remember seeing a lot of people say they did not like it when it was first coming out. But all I can speak for is the community post here. I think I might actually be in the unpopular opinion because I could not stand his movie. I think it is one of the worst DCEU movies that were made. I think it would go down as one of the worst DC movies ever made, in my opinion. There are two sides of why I don't like the movie, and it depends on what day you actually catch me on. One, it is genuinely because I don't like the film. I think there are a lot of problems with it story-wise production-wise, character-wise, narrative-wise, dialogue-wise, there's almost next to nothing I liked about the movie. But then number two, I think it's because the movie feels so unoriginal, so uninspiring, and it just falls flat on almost every single avenue of the film. If I had a dollar for every superhero movie for some sort of underachieving protagonist who gains the abilities or powers of something they don't understand, in which they have to fumble their way through into learning how to use, get beaten by a villain, to then have a grandstanding moment in the end where they just miraculously learn everything they need to know to defeat that main villain, I'd probably have at least 
15, 16, if I'm lucky, $17. I've just seen that archetype so many times and it was so boring for me watching that movie, coupled with the fact that I just really couldn't stand anything about it. And I know it probably sounds like I'm dumping over a movie you like and I apologize for that. That's not what I want this to be. If you like the movie, you like the movie. All power to you. I might be in the unpopular opinion situation for this particular topic. Now, looking at two comments here. Jonah Lyons or Leones? I think Jaime is a cooler and more entertaining character than Ted. Owen Rosenquist, Ted Cord is better. I think the more popular side of this discussion would be that Jaime is better than Ted. Jaime's Blue Beetle offers more variation and much more interest into who Blue Beetle is because of the fact that he actually utilizes the scarab. And this is me looking at both characters simplistically. I'm not going into any background details or specifics. When I look at both characters, I in a way see two very different characters. I know they both have relations to Blue Beetle, the Reach, the Scarab, but I see Jaime Reyes as the alienized Blue Beetle, whereas Ted Cord almost feels like a daytime vigilante who has modeled himself off of an alien artifact in which he can't actually use and models them around human-based weapons and techniques technology. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think it's fine. I'm just saying that other than their name Blue Beetle, both characters feel wildly different when you take a glance at them. Because Ted Cord has spent a lot of his history being dead, I think a lot of people do gravitate towards Jaime Reyes. So I'm not going to say your full name because I don't want to butcher it. So I'm just going to say the beginning of your name, which is de thang <laughs> Jaime for me personally is one of those DC characters that never really got established at any point in the general consensus timeline. What I mean is, he doesn't seem to fit well in any of the superhero generations. Not with the Trinity's generation, not with the first gen Titans, Dick, and Starfire, and he doesn't have memorable team-ups with Damien's, John's generation either, because he's usually depicted as older or in other superhero circles. This is a shame because he has great potential to be a permanent part of a great lineup. Bonus, I personally prefer Booster Gold with Ted Cord, not Jaime. This is actually a really great point, and I don't know exactly where I would place his establishment with complete certainty or accuracy. My best bet here is not like you said with the first generation of legacy characters with Nightwing, Starfire, Raven, and so on. I believe it's more so right in between their time and the newest generation with the kids, Damien and John, and so on from there. He's one of the very, very, very few heroes, one of the very few characters who finds themselves in a situation where they know a lot of superheroes, they know a lot of other people in their circle, but he's not necessarily close or well attached to anybody because he came at a very quiet period of generations where not too many brand new superheroes were rising up and making a name for themselves. However, this comment section is also filled with a lot of people saying he should be on a team like a Doom Patrol, a Teen Titans, some sort of Justice League. But then the other side is saying that I like the fact that this character does not share that type of attachment with anyone. Sure, from time to time, he'll take a slot in a Justice League or something, but he's never a full-time member because he operates on his own, more or less. I don't have an answer for that. I also don't have really an opinion either. I like when he works on teams, but I also like when he works separately. But nonetheless, what you mention here is very interesting. Geometric Chump. I think it would be more interesting for the Scarab's way of turning Jaime evil was more similar to the symbiote stoking of his fears and anger to convince him to serve the Reach and betray Earth, instead of the body snatcher thing taking over your motor functions the way it is now. Then the act of breaking out of the Reacher's influence is more based on Jaime's will and who he is as a person. I think that's a fantastic idea and a good change. Now maybe you could say it 
it is way too similar to Venom and Spider-Man's relationship but I still think it's cool. If you look at the Reach, they're a space-faring, planet-conquering species. I'm sure they have devices that if they put it on someone, it would take over your motor functions, perhaps to make not just the Scarab a little more of an interesting dynamic, to make the Reach an intriguing villain. Having particular Scarabs maybe deep-root itself into your brain, into your thoughts, talk to you and convince you that the reach is who you should serve. It is your responsibility to help the reach in any way you can, and whatever planet you're living on is pale in comparison, I think could be beneficial for the reach, considering their prime goal is to take over other planets and other civilizations at any cost necessary. Whether the war against other species is being fought traditionally, ground troops on ground troops, or using scarabs as a form of indoctrination, different ways of conquering your planet would be beneficial to them. So why wouldn't they create a scarab that could do something like that? And if you want it to be similar to the symbiote, you could use the black scarab for this instance. Now for my unpopular opinion on blue beetle, I think the scarab should offer a life extending ability to Jaime the longer that he wears the suit or just simply utilizes the scarab. It's not eternal, it's not 5,000 years, it's not even 800 years extra. He could live a little bit longer than the average human. He could potentially live to maybe 150, if not, if he's lucky, 200 years. And I think it would be really interesting to see in the Batman Beyond universe, so about 30 years give or take in the future. He still has quite a long life left ahead of him. What would happen is Bruce Wayne would actually bring Jaime in to help train Terry McGinnis for a short period of time because that's what makes a good Batman or a member of the Bat family. You don't just get trained by Batman or someone in the family, you get trained by multiple people with abilities and talents that you yourself do not have. And even if you're not perfect at it, at least you'll know it, unless you choose to be perfect at it and train it every day. I think it would be even really neat if there were certain properties of the Batman Beyond suit and maybe even certain gadgets that were tailored or modeled off of certain designs that Jaime could actually actually use from the Reach technology and flat out give to Terry McGinnis to protect Neo Gotham. Blue Beetle in this future could be this veteran superhero who is still operating, whereas even superheroes younger than him are no longer operating anymore. And he can go around to multiple people in need, not just being the Blue Beetle, but also helping them better themselves as heroes. There you go, everyone. That is some unpopular opinions and hot takes on the character of Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle. Overall, this is a character that, like I said, people feel there's a lot of potential surrounding him, and I do feel his potential will be coming in the future. It's just a matter of how much of it is going to be used. So you guys know the drill in the comments below. If you guys didn't get the chance to put an unpopular opinion in the community post, you can do so now. And I do have a list of unpopular characters I'm going to be doing in the future, but if you would like, leave a a character below and I will add them to the list. But that is all I have for you on this one, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed. And until the next time, I will talk to you all very soon. I'm the Batman.